After several decades spent backpacking, I'm still learning new things and discovering new and better ways to go backpacking. Every year I get to test a huge amount of new backpacking gear. Sometimes things don't go so well. But the benefit of these trials is discovering new gear that really improves my experience. This year is no different, so I've compiled a list of gear that really stands out. Gear I should have bought sooner. Sleep is one of the most critical parts of the backpacking equation, and it really stinks when you just aren't getting it right. I've spent literally hundreds, thousands of nights outdoors at this point in my uh, backpacking career, and this year I finally found the system that actually works the best for me because it feels the most like a bed. That, my friends, is the Zen Bivy Light Bed. The Zen Bivy Light Bed really changed the game for me this year. I spend so much time outside that you'd never want to have a bad night's sleep. If you're only spending like one night out a year or something like that, you can get away with not having the world's greatest system, with saving some money. However, if you're spending significant amount of time camping, hiking, backpacking, you really want an awesome system. And this year, I tried out this new system from Zen Bivy. Honestly, I was blown away by it. It's so good. It's different than your typical sleeping bag in a lot of ways. It is a glorified quilt, but it also comes with a sheet attachment that you actually wrap around your existing mattress, or you can get Zen Bivy's mattress that is made for it, which is awesome too. The thing that really makes this great is that it feels like a bed. So on the sheet itself is basically a pillow barn that you can really tuck your head into. It's got insulation, it's warm, and it feels amazing. This is also very versatile. It is actually just a big rectangular quilt, but it's got all of these different little hook points throughout the whole system all around. This is like the foot and it's got multiple points that actually connect to the sheet that wraps around your mattress, connecting it. And then you can also cinch this up down on the bottom and really create a nice foot box as well as an additional system around the neck or the head. So you can really have that cozy feel that I find elusive with quilts. Why are quilts even popular? Well, you're not spending a bunch of insulation and bulk and material on what's underneath you that ultimately when you sleep on it, you compress it, it doesn't really insulate you from underneath. People in the ultralight community thought, well, let's just ditch that part altogether and just focus on what's above you and let the mattress really provide that insulating value beneath you, which honestly makes a lot of sense. However, the downside for me with most quilts is that you just don't have that cozy experience. They're functional, they're warm, and I sleep pretty good, but they don't provide that, hmm, I'm settling in for a good night of sleep. And this, changes that for me. This is that coziness that I require, or, or require, uh, that I really desire out of a good sleep system. This one right here is Zen Bivy's 10 degree system. And honestly, I'm kind of on the fence with what I recommend. It is very warm. If you're gonna be doing shoulder season backpacking, spring into fall, then the 10 degree system is great because you can be very comfortable in a very wide range of temperatures, including when it's pretty warm. You can just keep these things unhooked and have it pretty open and airy and use it like you would a blanket in your bed and just kind of have it half open as you cool off, throw it back over you. The downside of the 10 degree version is that it's just a little bit heavier and a little bit bulkier than I'd probably like to carry, this weighs in at three pounds with the sheet, and that's just a little much, I think, for a general summertime bag or a three season bag. But when you get into that shoulder season, it's, it's like the perfect thing. So I think I still like the 10 degree version, but I'm kind of tempted to see if the 25 degree version might be better suited for just your your general backpacking situation. If I were to go with that 25 degree bag, I can shave a full pound off the system, which is pretty awesome. In summary, this is just the closest thing that I've encountered 
to the experience of sleeping in a bed. Look forward to every night of sleep that I've had with this thing. Thanks and Bivy for that one. Moving on, I've got the Copper Spur from Big Agnes. This is the two person, this is the HV Mountain Glow, and it's all fancy speak for ultra premium tent. The Copper Spur has just been my drop dead favorite tent that I've ever used. And I keep coming back to this tent over and over again for a number of reasons. Mainly this doorway, as you can see here, the, what I'm filming into is huge. I've got this massive door space because I've got a zipper here and a zipper here that allows me to fully roll this completely up. It's got one on the other side too. So if I want, I can just create this amazing breezeway. I can pitch these out into an awning. If it's got some drizzle, some rain, or even if I just want shade from the sun. I'm gonna take you off the tripod for a second. You've got this generous amount of storage way up here. You also have an additional one here. So there's tons of ways to get gear and stuff off the ground and uh, stored, especially if you're backpacking with two people, you know that this space can get really premium and uh, it can be tough to find enough room for everything. The other thing that's great about this tent is just the amount of headroom that there is. For a two person tent, it's completely ample. It's not the biggest tent I've ever used, but for an, a lightweight, borderline ultralight tent, the amount of headroom in here is awesome. Some of the ultralight tents out there on the market are like this tall and you have to army crawl in, lay down. There's almost no room. You feel like a mummy in there. And that's just not very fun. All around here are LED lights that at first I thought would be gimmicky, lame. I would never use them. Turns out I use them all the time. And so you've got this little toggle switch here that just rests uh, at the top of the tent and you can just click a button and you've got lights. So I think because of the added bulk of this and then just the battery management, I probably wouldn't do the Mountain Glow again, but at the same time, that uh, Mountain Glow is very pleasant. This is the most expensive tent I've ever owned. This is a $600 tent. It is really stinking pricey, but I will say that it is the best tent I've ever owned. This weighs in at two pounds and 13 ounces, so just shy of that three pound mark. I think most people here on the internet when they think of ultralight, they're thinking of much closer to two pounds. This tent performs really well. I've used it in a ton of different situations. I took it down to Peru. I've done a lot of big treks with it. And this has some of the best ventilation that I've experienced. It's withstood many storms in its career. And I just find it to be the bomber tent that I keep going back to over and over and over again. Okay, this next one, I know I'm gonna invite some criticism, some backlash and I don't care. Uh, I did a video last year about how I'm ditching the jet boil and I, I did. I did ditch the jet boil because I was developing bad habits. I was relying on that ultra fast boil time and I just wasn't cooking creative meals. And a lot of people have commented on that video that, hey, jet boil makes other things. So I actually got one of them. I got the mini mo and the skillet. This is made to connect with the flux ring. You kind of have that standard jet boil classic ultra fast boil times. If you're just doing a lot of boil and eat type dehydrated meals, freeze dried meals, still killer for that. However, with that, I have now added in this skillet support. And that means that I have made some of the most creative meals this year than I have really in a long time. This skillet is $45, it weighs 10 ounces. Some people just aren't gonna go for that. But the thing is, is that for certain trips, I really like to focus on food and comfort. And this system has really allowed me to do that this year. And I've just really had a lot of fun kind of coming back and falling in love again with food in the backcountry. Eating good food, eating fresh food. It's got that PSO lighting, which is really nice. You can really crank this up and get that super fast boil time, or you can actually bring it down and just have that simmering heat that is really great for being able to cook nice food. I have the pot stand on it right now, but you can drop that off and have it 
connect in with the flux ring. That's kind of like the main pot system that Joe Boyle does. This is basically a $200 cook setup because I've got the $40 skillet, the Minimo pot with the stove is $165. So that's pricey. I have enjoyed just your simple pocket rocket and a simple pot which is really like a $100 setup. But you've got the efficiency, you've still got the ability to cook great food, and honestly, it's just been a playful, fun, re-falling in love with food again, and thanks to the Minimo for that. Next up on my list is the LifeStraw Peak Series Squeeze water filter. I have used a lot of really bulky water filters over the years. I've really enjoyed Grail. I've used Rapid Pure system. One of my favorites of all time is the MSR Guardian, but the MSR Guardian is like the classic overbuilt, super beefy water filter. It's great for where I live because you have a ton of sediment in the water and it cleans it out. But for general backpacking, especially up in the mountains with cleaner water sources, and I love the price point. It's right around $40. I think this one's $44 now. This is the filter right here. And this is just a water bag. You can just scoop up the water. This one is actually more durable than the Be Free, which is why I like this system a little better. Some people complain that because of the design of this, you can't get all the water out, but I haven't really found that to be the case. Granted, if you are just trying to filter like this, then yeah, the water line stops here and this amount of water doesn't come filtered, but it's really a simple solution. You just fold it like that and then you can drink the rest of the water. The downside for me is the back flushing system. LifeStraw recommends having the syringe with it and like in making this video, I don't know where the syringe is and it's definitely a good idea to actually backpack with that syringe because if it gets clogged, then you're kind of stuck. And you back flush it regularly. This system will last a long time. You can put like 2000 liters of water through it, which is a lot of backpacking. For most people out there, this is just gonna be the way to go. Fanny pack. I had a funny experience backpacking in the Grand Canyon about a year ago. I went with like seven other guys and I was literally the only one out of everybody that didn't bring a camp chair. I just have been a non-chair, non-stool user for years. I went on this trip and everybody busted, as soon as they got to camp, they bust out their chairs. And I was literally like the social pariah because I couldn't sit with the fun kids. So I just kind of sat in the middle of them all awkwardly every night around camp. And it was just weird. So I decided, you know what, this year I'm going to actually go and try out some chairs, some stools. And this one from Grand Trunk has been my favorite. So this is the 360 degree swivel stool. Oop, it's got some mud from my last trip. Okay. Got a lot of dirt here that's built up, whoops. The 360 degree swivel stool from Grand Trunk has been one of my favorite additions of the year because it's just fun. It's actually added so much comfort to my backpacking experience. And at one pound, $60, this has just been a great find. Dan Becker thinks I'm silly when I just spin around and around and around on the thing, but I can't help myself. It's actually very useful, especially when you're got something cooking over here and maybe something happening over here, turn back and forth and not just have to like lift your chair up. It's a great value at 60 bucks and it has like a really high weight capacity rating at 330 pounds. So pretty impressive. At one pound, it's about as light as a lot of the other good quality ultralight chairs out there. I think in the next year, if I can predict in the future what my next year's gear I should have bought sooner, it's going to be a lightweight chair with a back to it. But for now, I'm working my way up and the stool has been a big upgrade and I've really liked it. So ease up everybody. The back with the chair is coming, but uh, this, I'm baby steps everybody. I'm getting there, okay? Ooh, man, that is a lot of dirt that I imported. Next up is the Event compression straps from Sea to Summit. Space is always at a premium in a backpack. And just having the ability to really minimize the amount of room that your sleeping bag takes up or your clothes or your jackets or something like that is awesome. So I can really crank this thing. Ah, okay, nothing happened. This is my 10 degree sleeping bag, which has been pretty bulky. I have now compressed it down into this very manageably sized item. The other thing that makes this really cool is that as you squeeze this, the air will escape out, but it's waterproof. If you've got a lot of moisture, 
you're hiking in a bunch of rain or something like that, then this is a great way to make sure that your sleeping bag stays dry. The Event compression straps are a little pricey, but kind of in line with a lot of compression bags. This system costs 50 bucks and it weighs 5.9 ounces. This is the bigger one. This is a 20 liter bag. You can obviously spend a little bit less and have it be a little bit lighter, like the 15 liter bag or the 10 liter bag. But it's awesome, especially for winter bags or really bulky sleeping bags, just being able to get this thing way down there in size. I definitely should have bought this sooner because I really like it a lot. Okay, there might be a theme for the next few items here, but it's kind of like storage items and organization items. But here I have the eight liter flat pack dry bag from Matador. This is a very simple item, but I use this as my bear hang a lot for getting food up off the ground or, or keeping food away from rodents, hanging it up in trees and things like that. I also use this as a water hauling device sometimes. And the thing that makes this different for me is the flat bottom. It's called the flat pack for a reason. Most dry bags don't have this, or if you try to put water in it, they'll just awkwardly roll over and will start leaking, even if you've got this thing rolled up. And this thing, I can literally fill it with water and just set it on a table or on the ground, and it won't just tip over. It's got a nice little handy carrying spot, a place to put a carabiner, or I put the carabiner on this D-clip, and you can also see your food in here, which, you know, not a big deal, but I really like it. So you can use it for clothes, you can use it for a lot of things, but I found it to just be my ditty bag, my food bag, satisfying shape and space for my backpack. It costs 40 bucks and it weighs 2.3 ounces. I don't have to overthink this one, it's a food bag. Next on my list is this fleece that I'm wearing right now. This year I came across a company called Appalachian Gear Company. It's kind of like a cottage industry company based here in the US that makes great clothing and different fabric-y things, textile things out of alpaca wool. Now, alpaca wool is really interesting because it's one of nature's best, most efficient fibers. That means that it makes great clothing. This has been my favorite mid-layer. And the thing that's unique about alpaca wool is that you don't need a lot of it in order to keep you pretty warm. It's very efficient. So this is fairly thin. Even though my studio is actually like just barely hovering above freezing, I'm pretty comfortable in this sweater. It's versatile. You can wear it in warmer temperatures and it'll keep you cooler. And you can wear it in colder temperatures and it'll keep you warmer. This gives you a much bigger zone to be comfortable in from warmer temperatures down to colder temperatures. Alpaca wool even will insulate you and keep you warm even if it's wet. Alpaca fiber is naturally odor resistant. So I wear this thing all the time. I've literally worn this so much for a year. I think I've washed it three times, maybe. My fiance might not be happy to hear that, but uh, yeah, you don't really need to wash these very often. So they don't stink, they feel clean all the time, even under heavy, constant, repetitive use. This fleece sweater is kind of expensive at 165 bucks. For what it is, it's actually well worth the money, in my opinion. Using nature's best materials is really amazing. So alpaca wool is great. Side note, if you are thinking about purchasing this, this is a small and uh, the sizes definitely run large. Definitely size it down a full size under what you might normally purchase. Last on my list is another piece of clothing, the Keb Agile trousers from Fjallraven. Fjallraven, I'm gonna have to ask my Swedish or Finnish friends how you say that, but I really have fallen in love with these pants. These are the most expensive hiking pants I've ever worn. You can see that a fair bit of the gear that I've fallen in love with is expensive and pricey, but when you see the, how much I spend outside, these things actually are prove their value over and over again. A good pair of hiking pants are no different. I love the weight, uh, the weight and material of this. They have a little bit of stretch and give, they're reinforced around the ankles, they're reinforced at the knees, and so they're going to be more durable, more long-lasting than most hiking pants out there. Fjallraven has been making great clothing and gear that can withstand that tough Scandinavian weather. These pants are no different. I really like these. These are a little bit more breathable than the regular Kebs, 
And so they're better suited to me for where I am, although I really do like the Cubs as well. These have ventilation on your thighs and it is so nice if you're getting warm to be able to vent out your pants and stay cool because you don't really wanna start sweating. So these have become a true favorite of mine. They've got, you know, your four pockets. One thing to note, there's no butt pockets on these. So great for making your butt look good. If you do wear them around town, you can't put a wallet in your back pocket. These have a little bit of elastic around the kind of gator spot or around your ankles, keeping debris out of your boots and things like that. So they've gotten a lot of details right with these pants. It's pricey. I know that $200 hiking pants might be out of a lot of people's range, but they're some of the best hiking pants I've ever worn. That's It's my clothing list and I just love them. So, hey, check them out. The Fjall Raven Keb Agile Trousers. And you get to say trousers, like you're like a proper, you know, uppity person. For something a little bit more economical to add to my list, a new favorite piece of gear is the Packstack Pro from Hillsound. Now, this is a very simple thing. It's basically an organization bag, but well, there's a couple reasons why I really like this. One, it's waterproof. The other thing that I really like is that I found multiple uses for it, such as using it as my camera bag. Now, in the past, when I've gone backpacking, I've had to bring a specific camera bag to carry and protect my camera equipment. Whereas with this, I can actually double it up. I can, one, drop that really bulky camera bag, and I can take this, where I can literally just carry extra clothes, or the clothes that I'm already taking, and stuff it in here, and then just create a soft little cocoon that is easy for me to get in and out of. It's got a waterproof zipper, I don't think that this is submersible style waterproof. In my opinion, one point of vulnerability, and that's right here where the bag closes, there's just the smallest little gap. So if this were to like fall off of a boat, it's gonna get water inside at some point. It is a great way to keep your gear dry, especially if you're really just mostly concerned about rain or precipitation. You can see how it's shaped. It literally is designed to fit the curvature of your backpack so that you can create these modular systems if you wanted to. I typically only carry one of these, but just for clothes and cameras, it's a really great way to keep my stuff organized. So because, of, because I often backpack with cameras, it's become my camera bag. I will have like extra things. This is for microphones, you know, some just like little camera bits and bobs, as well as of course, just my clothes. The Hillsound Packstack Pro costs $29 carries 6.4 liters of capacity and weighs four ounces. Every year is an experience learning new things and these have been the pieces of gear that I have loved so much, I wanted to tell you about them. So I'd love to hear from you. What are your favorite pieces of gear, either from my list or things that I totally missed or just your favorite pieces of gear in general? I'd love to hear your comments below and uh, maybe trigger some ideas for me to add some new things into next year's list. Okay, if you like this video, please give it that thumbs up and make sure you subscribe here at Backpacking TV. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm Eric Hansen. I'm gonna go shovel some snow. We'll see you later.